One of my other, my other mother, she was the only other woman that put my behind. Growing up, <laughs> mother behind me, Jack. I'm proud of you. Thank God for you. Amen. She was, she the only somebody else that put my behind right there in the yard. Amen. I'm going to take it off. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for Mother Willie. Amen. Look like they're gracious. My Facebook page every morning. She'll be right up with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm so humbled and delighted to be here in your presence. I'm so delighted to be able to share a word, to encourage my friend and I always pray that God will send a word to my house. Because yeah. I will never come on business to preach to one person. All right. The word of God is for all of us. Amen. Before we go into the word, I want to offer just a word of prayer. Most holy and righteous God, we thank you for another opportunity to impart your word into me and to your people. Pray, Father, that you will keep me humble. I pray that you will use the book and vessel to speak only your word and not my people. Father, I pray that you will strengthen and encourage this house. Father, strengthen and encourage this house. Let us leave from this place no longer the same because of your little word that is known for you. In Jesus' name, I do thank you and pray. Amen. Amen. I didn't know who all was going to come with me, but I'm so glad to see my church family. Yeah. Amen. Everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you can spring here with us. I don't want to be before you long. I got the short part. Amen. But if you have your Bible, I want to invite you to join me in the book of First Peter. Amen. The Lord laid the theme on my heart. Pastor Jack and Axe. Amen. We want to deal with it just for a few minutes. First Peter chapter 5. Verses 1 through 4. I want to thank those while you turn to First Peter chapter 5. Later in the face of the microphone. Wipe down. That's a blessing. First Peter chapter 5. Verses 1 through 4. Not far from revelation. Good afternoon, man. Leave it away from your own love. Amen. And read, you know, the reading from the NIV. To the elders among you, I feel as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock. King James says, Feed the flock of God that is under your care. Watching over them, not because you plus, but because you're willing. And God wants you to be. Not pursuing this honest game of filthy food, but of a ready mind are eager to serve you. Not lording it over those who entrusted you, but being examples to the flock. And when, I like this title, that when the chief shepherd of him, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Thank you for standing in love of the word of God. Thank you for not letting him, whether you stand or sit. If I can take a few moments of the time, I want to deal directly with the theme, the work of honor, and the crown of glory. The work of honor, and the crown of glory. If I could attach a subtopic, I would tell you right off, 
See what the end is going to be. Pastor Sheila, I love the fact that we who hold this office are still referred to as pastors. In the New Testament, we're referred sometimes as bishops, which is simply a superintendent or an overseer. But we're so much more than superintendents. Superintendents administrate and manage. You'll also find in the Old and New Testament we are called pastors. And everybody in Israel would know what a pastor is because that term points back to one of the oldest occupations in the Bible. The one that the second born into this world hailed, Abel. He was a shepherd. And that's what a pastor is. A shepherd. The occupation of a shepherd was so widely held and recognized in Israel that one of the top ten hits was about a shepherd. You know what it says. That the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Making me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside still waters. You know the song. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And he says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will pray forever. That's a shepherd. Yeah. David would tell you that a shepherd does much more than just manage and oversee. You see, he was the under shepherd keeping his earthly father's sheep. But David also knew about a shepherd because of the shepherd that was keeping David. We do more than just manage and oversee. We, like David, are caring for someone else's flock. I can tell you that in doing that and caring for somebody else's flock, I would lose my mind if the shepherd wasn't caring for me. The Lord is my shepherd. Pastor Sheila, you don't have to tell me just a few things that I've known you to go through. I know you would have lost your mind if God wasn't keeping you. Just to be able to stand up here and preach the word, to be able to stand and still be in your right mind, I know you got to taking care of you. People can't look at you on the outside and tell what you've been through because you're being kept so well by the shepherd. I know. Only people knew the grace that it takes just to stand on a Sunday morning. They know we need our shepherd to keep us. But we are more than managers. We have shepherds underneath the good shepherd whose name is Jesus. Yeah. And the work that we are called to carry out is an honor. It's an honor to care for God's sheep. It's an honor to feed God's sheep. It's an honor to pray for God's sheep. It's an honor to visit and encourage God's sheep. This work is an honor. Many times, pretty much every Sunday, I'll be but thanks be to God for His grace that we operate with this moment. These few verses offer us a beautiful description of how we are to carry out our duties as Christ of the shepherd. Can I get my little elevator for us out of the way and get on out of here? The first thing I want to let you know according to the scripture is that we shepherd God's flock. First thing Peter encourages the elders or the overseers to do is to feed the flock of God. This word feed isn't just what it looks like on the surface. The Greek word used here means to tend to as a shepherd. 
This goes far beyond the other word used for feed, which is Bosco, that just means to provide food. But as David spoke of his shepherd, he brought out the fact that God provides, God leads, God cares for, God protects, God corrects, and God refreshes him among other attributes. For those who mistakenly believe, all we do is get up and talk on Sunday morning. We shepherd God's people like God shepherds us. We feed God's flock right out of God's kitchen where we labor day and night to make sure the menu is correct. We lead God's flock according to the vision that he has provided to us. We care for their souls that when they hurt, we hurt. When they celebrate, we celebrate. We personally become involved in the lives of our people. We stand on the wall and we announce the presence of the wolf trying to sneak his way into the flock. We protect God's flock by preaching the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Otherwise, you can't protect the sheep. We we reprove and correct and love when the sheep stray away from the truth. We refresh the souls of God's sheep by reminding them of God's promises toward his children. We do need even more because if a pastor is actually leading with the heart of God, that pastor must know how much God is concerned for his sheep. John 21 verses 15 through 17, Jesus has a conversation with the same Peter. Jesus put so much emphasis on his concern for his sheep that he grieves Peter asking the same question three times. Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than me? Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? But what I want us to understand is when you look at the actual words Jesus is using, Jesus asked Peter, do you unconditionally love me? And Peter responds that I'm a friend of yours. I'm no friend and of course I love you. Peter uses the word Vallejo as to say, I'm no buddy. You ought to know that I love you. Jesus says, if you love me, feed my land. The first time he was telling him to actually provide food, which is the word of God, to his land. The second time Jesus asked Peter, he asked him again, do you love me unconditionally? Peter said, you know we friends, Jesus. I love your man. Jesus said, if you love me, then feed my sheep. This time he said, being a shepherd to my sheep, like I'm a shepherd to you.
and not grudgingly. God is not going to force us to do anything for him. God calls us that we are foreordained, but amen, before you accepted the calling, you had the choice to say that. But if we got to be willing to shepherd, the sheep got to be willing to eat. Yes, 
somebody else looking at us wearing green, that we better be trying to impress, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. 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 Whether they like how I preach or not, Pastor Sheila, uh, I got to do what Jesus said do. Thank you. 
And that one buried his money in the ground. And when the chief shepherd, I mean when the, the master came back, he, he, he demanded of the steward to give an account of your stewardship. And the one that five, he, he showed him, this is what I got with what you gave me. And the one with two, he said, this is what I got, but you gave me. But the one with one said, I mean you a hard. And I didn't want to disappoint you, so I took what you gave me. Because you know you sow where you didn't, I mean you reap where you didn't sow. And so, so, so see you hard, I put it in the ground and I kept it. At least I still got it. Well, I don't want to deal with that one right now. That's another sermon for another day. But to the two, at the end, when the chief shepherd, I mean when the master came back, he said, what did you do? And they said, this is what we do. And he heard, they heard these words. That I believe, Pastor, we are here if we just run on. He said, well done. My good and faithful servant. He, he, he says, you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over me. And then he told him, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. If I could just encourage you to go on and take my little seat, I want to just encourage you to run on. Pastor and saints alike. If you're faithful over what God gave you, there's a crown of glory at the end. The crown represents the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. The victory that we have for running on and not giving up. One day, the crown of glory, praise God, will be, amen, manifested by those words. Well done, the good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into my joy. I want to let you know that you might have one member. You might have ten members. You might have a hundred or a thousand. But just be faithful over what God put in your care. And God will pay. God, if you just run on, he'll give you a crown of glory. He'll greet you with his own parade. Even if they don't give you a parade down here, you'll get to hear him say, well done, the good and faithful servant. Well done, the good and faithful servant. You are faithful over your strong ministry. You are faithful over your giving ministry. You are faithful over showing mercy and grace. You are faithful over forgiveness. You are faithful over shallow. You are faithful over whatever it is God gave you stewardship over. But if you remain faithful, there's a crown of glory in the end. Praise God at 
the heavens journey. 